uh, certainly uh, let someone know or use the help. Our position with you today is to certainly help present some products that can produce some growth and revenue stream potential for you. There are also um, opportunities to see and explore what else Sherwin-Williams uh, also has to offer in connection with the products and services that you already use and render for us. We're going to have a product overview. We're going to talk about some specific uh, things associated with some product application. We're going to probably sit about a 30 to 50,000 foot view. Uh, and we know that you'll more than likely get additional information from your local Sherwin Williams representatives. So uh, we'll move on through our presentation. You'll please have to let me know if uh, you have any questions because on my monitor I can't see inside the chat box if you're able to uh, see my screen. The brand of H&C, uh, it's been around for a long time. I mean, even some of these slides could certainly use some updating. Uh, H&C has been around as uh, a concrete coating for, for well over 80 years. The premise of H&C was that uh, it was established in 1929. A lot of people have always asked me where did the uh, H&C comes from, and I always like to tell people. Uh, when I first started working for H&C, um, I, I always thought it stood for home and concrete. It actually stands for Horny and Caruso. Horny and Caruso were the two scientists who basically uh, utilized silicone instead of it actually repelling something. They were able to actually fortify it with products such as water and xylene. Now, the the old myth and legend of H and C is that it really began as a root coat back in Florida with the production or induction of red color roof tiles. And uh, one day. While uh, they were doing one of these projects, some uh, red H&C actually fell in a driveway, and they tried for weeks to remove it to their dismay. The customer, the homeowner, just said, you know what, I've never had a red driveway before, so just paint it. And as a result, all that in the, the individual's neighbors wanted their uh, driveways red and other colors as well. And thus, that's really how H&C has uh, really become known for its high quality and superior adhesion characteristics in its coatings from roof tile to the process that we're going to talk about today, which is certainly your decorative concrete applications. We have a brand commitment uh, to sales excellence as we are here before you today. We always look for opportunities to improve our customers' ability to uh, strengthen revenue opportunities. We uh, certainly know that through our distribution organization of Sherwin-Williams that they look forward to giving you first-class customer service and also the effective marketing tooling that uh, you need to not only help us to position ourselves above our competition, but for you as well to position yourself above your competition. And decorative concrete is a fantastic avenue for which you can accomplish this. Uh, we're always looking for new and innovative ways to, create it, to make concrete more appealing, to make it artistic, uh, to make it more colorful. Our prowess is that we'd like to move from gray and drabby to uh, uh, chic and happy. And one of the things that we do that is we there there are times and we'll talk about this later on in the presentation. There are times when it does call for uh, concrete replacement. But as you're going to be able to see, a lot of our products uh, either delay that, make it a more cost-effective option, or can certainly even dissuade an individual from having to do that. Because a lot of times what they're really is looking for is the concrete to be more aesthetically pleasing, not just uh, a function, the functional aspects of concrete. HSC also has a reputation of being a leader in this particular category and this innovation. And so we're wanting to uh, share some things, obviously, that we've learned on to you all in regards to our product offering. So here's a wide range of products that you will see um, in the flyer there to the right. Uh, pretty much all our products can just about be used on every concrete surface, uh, especially around the home. As you're probably well associated, you probably walked over some locations that probably need it a little decorative concrete treatment, whether it's a pool deck or a garage floor. Um, one of the very few uses that people 
don't even realize that uh, we have a couple of products that are really excellent for stucco, and we even do basement walls, floors, patios, and walkways. Uh, when you look over, it's kind of a quick overview, you see categories that we're in. Uh, for this group, we certainly are very aware that wash floors are definitely a part of the mainstream. It is, they, they are definitely a part of customers taking on additional projects for their home, especially if that has been the case for, uh, you know, someone who's decided to maybe do a painting project or to have you do some type of home improvement project for them. And what we're actually seeing is that the concept of the DIFM or but such as you would be the do it for me type of uh, service that there is still an increase in this. It seems like uh, when you look on television, a lot of people are trying to make the process really simple and uh, port this thing out as something that people can do and would prefer to do themselves. But our research has definitely shown that they want quality insulation. They, they understand the sticker shock of the price tags and why these products from their different distribution points cost as much as they do, but they are looking for you, the professional, to uh, make that installation possible for them. So this is a big opportunity for you, is the Shield Create Epoxy uh, Concrete Floor Coating. Uh, probably next, I would have to think for you all, would also be this uh, Sobic Stain to Shard Rip and Trap products, and even more so the, the things that you're going to actually do that just change the color of the concrete. Probably by far, that is the number one color attribute that people do to their decorative concrete projects is that they like to apply solid color stains and sealers over whatever existing projects that they have. Now, obviously, sometimes these are not always brand new projects, and we'll talk about that even a little bit more later on because some of these have been previously sealed, there's other competitive products on there, all types of situations that you have to deal with out there in the field, and you have to be able to position yourself to know what is the best system that the consumer is actually trying to buy. I, I know many times when I speak to people about what they want, or well, what they want is a lot different from what the concrete sometimes or the product will actually yield. And I know you all are very, very familiar about uh, customers' uh, wants and the realities when it comes to uh, substrate application. Perhaps, uh, yeah, I think it's most interesting is obviously decorative concrete stain. Uh, acid stain is still continue to uh, be chased by all color applications for semi-transparent, but also something's growing in popularity it's a stampable overlay and textures that you see creating this rock and stone look, some of these other harder, more abrasive surface applications, and therefore pinning those uh, to applications post-ad, which sometimes can be a little bit hard to do, and we'll talk about that as we move through the uh, product orientation. However, uh, keep in mind that a lot of these products can be used very, very heavy commercial. We do a lot of commercial with these products that are not just residential. And uh, you can feel very confident uh, in this brand of H&C if you have to do something that is going to be just a little bit more than the uh, usual application. So with that in mind, we'll continue to hear through our presentation. Uh, we're going to talk about first the agency concrete stains and sealers. And as we talk about the stains and sealers, uh, one of the things we're looking at is certainly the number one feature product in this category is the solvent-based application. You've, you've probably seen it many, many times. You've probably, uh, not, you may have even applied some yourself. But the concrete solid color solvent-based is particularly designed for use with uh, exter exterior uh, horizontal or vertical surfaces. Um, one of the things that you can also use it for is concrete blocks and brick. Now, what we are starting to see also, too, is that a lot of individuals are going to pick colors that are not necessarily on the agency chart. 
So just to let you know, pretty much any color is available except for some of the richer, deeper colors that you assign on your, your current uh, Sherwin-Williams color chart. But as you can see, the product's uses are the uh, concrete driveways, the patios, the walkways. I mean, these are typical application usages for this particular product. And one of the things we do like about it is that it is ready for vehicular traffic. Now, a couple of these pro tips that I might give you along the way, these are things that you just may not necessarily uh, read or find. These are things that help you make an application a lot better, is that these particular types of products are, are applied generally at least two to three coats, but each coat should be ran perpendicular to each other. And the purpose of that is it creates a cross-linking with the particular components of the product, which actually strengthens the bond and actually even makes them more uh, chemical resistant. But as you'll see that this particular product there in one of the uh, bullets there, it mentions that it is resistant to salt, acids, alkali, water. I will say that over time, very few things will have a permanent life against these type of environmental conditions. However, uh, the product is a xylene-based product, which means that after it's been applied in over a few years that an individual wants to uh, reapply the product, it does a unique feature, which it rewets itself. So it's a great bond if you have a previously uh, colored type of application that you know is xylene-based. I um, always tell people that, you know, when you're working with xylene-based products, you want to give yourself, you know, the apple application window to do that. The optimum is 50 degrees and rising and 90 degrees and cooling. Now, I know that some of you may be like myself and reside here in Texas, and you may say, Jeff, when is that going to happen? And, and generally, that's going to be pretty much at night. This time of year, very, very early in the morning. Some of the substrates I've measured, uh, on my travels have been at 95 degrees and at 7 o'clock in the morning. So this product, you know, you do want to have a judicious application window. You want to make sure that you're not in direct sunlight because xylene is a fast-drying solvent. And by either overworking the product or the product itself being too hot, the ambient temperature being too hot, you can overwork the product, which will cost you uh, additional efforts in labor and application. This particular product is, uh, it's been recently re-labeled. We like to stay away from the terminology of low VOC, and we call it uh, concrete, uh, solid color, sealer, and basically this is a different formulation. For those of you who may be up in the north, uh, this is the, if you will, uh, version of the red label that you previously saw on the other screen. It just gets you in that uh, category of being 250 uh, grams per liter less. Uh, one of the things that we really do like about this particular uh, application, because it is a different type of solvent package that is in the product, is that it goes down really, really smooth, really, really easy. And it also, too, is extremely suitable for driving surfaces. Now, most of the, these two products that we just discussed, most of these solid color products, you're going to notice are either going to be a satin or a matte finish. And some of you may uh, be wondering, you know, how could we obtain these in gloss? Generally speaking, if you are going to need a gloss type of application, you would still apply these products and then you would add our decorative concrete sealer or our versions of the clears that are found in these products as well because these tend to be very high solid types of clear coat systems and as a result they are uh, can achieve the gloss finish. We always recommend that you use some type of sand additive because most of the time when customers choose to go gloss uh, after the first rain they kind of come back to you and have a lot of questions about what you can do to make it not so slippery. Our concrete stain is the difference in name here. We call the first two concrete sealers. We call the water-based version concrete stain. So we can have some differentiation when we're just speaking to and for products. Uh, is a very, very good product as well. Now, I know, uh, you know, people ask me, well, what's the difference? I mean, what's the difference between salt and water-based? 
Well, uh, solvent products are very good penetrators, whereas these water-based formulations, they just need to be on a clean surface that has been uh, sanded properly. Uh, no, another pro tip that we always like to have, and it's really good to have your team and the individuals on you know, your group is to make sure and have 120 grit sandpaper on every flooring job because 70% of the time, most applications are going to require some type of profile. Result, the profile that is uh, the best for architectural decorative products, such as what you're seeing here in H&C today, is going to be 120 grits. Always, you know, people always say, how long do I sand? Well, it's not really a matter how long you sand, it's what you're trying to sand to and what profile you're trying to create. Um, once you do create a, a good profile, you have great adhesion, you get really good bonding because this is a lot more mechanical than it is chemical. That is the reason why also this particular product can be applied over previously uh, colored or previously applied substrates, whereas the solvent product, it can only be applied to bare concrete it can only be applied to xylene-based re-wetting products. But this right here gives you a little bit more flexibility when maybe you're not first to the scene, so to speak, or you're doing the application as something new uh, for the first time. You have an opportunity to experience uh, water-based. This is also a great product around pool decks. I've been asked many times, can we use a solvent around a pool deck? Well, you can. A couple things, though is that if you do use the water, but you have a lot more surface tension, which means that when it gets wet, it's a lot less slippery. Also, it's breathable. And in most cases, uh, chemical chlorinated pools, uh, they don't fight water-based products as they would probably naturally be more consciously trying to fight a solvent. So that's the reason why we like to use the water base where we can around our pool decks. Um, another area that uh, could be really good if somebody wanted to do a band of color uh, with another decorative application, especially in a uh, facility or a home or a, uh, an occupied setting, this would also be the product to use because of the lower odor. So if you're looking for you know, that situation where you, know, you look for VOC compliance, you're also looking to have to deal with a live setting. A lot of times, even if the solvent base is used when it's unoccupied and people tend to return to that space in maybe less than 40 hours, if the ventilation system is pretty strong, you can usually have that out, you know, in say two days. But in most cases, I would always recommend to wait three days if you are going to use solvent. But both of these products dry extremely fast. They're very durable. They're both designed to be driven on. Now, at this time, though, it's not our desire to use these for residential garages. As you know, we have shield creep for that. But you do know uh, it does mention here about parking garages, any type of parking structures. Most of those are generally vertical uh, during the application anyway. But I just wanted to make a clear distinction that this would not, these first two, first three products actually, would not be the one specifically designed for your garage for use for parking. Our water-based semi-transparent stain is probably a one to note here. This is a product and a system that we'll be talking about later that can really get you uh, high volume. You can also get you very, very high ROI. Um, this is the easiest of the semi-transparent applications to apply. It also is one of the most color uh, optional systems that you can have. It's a very UV stable system, so if you're going to want to put a green or a blue or some type of what we call the funky colors, you know, on the outside or on the exterior, these would be, uh, these would certainly be the colors to, to utilize. Now, obviously these have to be uh, installed on bare concrete substrates. However, there is no neutralization required. There's no cleanup. You put this in a pump-up sprayer. You spray uh, generally a gallon. These gallons are concentrate, 
So one gallon could actually make about four to five gallons, just depending on your concentration of mix. Uh, the product, if it's over applied somewhere before it's sealed, could be removed with water and a rag. Uh, one thing I always do tell people, though, there are some really, really poor substrates out there. And if there is a real poor substrate, how do you know if it's really porous? Is if you put the color on and you come back and say, hey, there's, there's no color here, then generally you're going to have to put a uh, some type of priming underneath it. And I'll show you what one of those is and then I'll reference back to uh, semi-transparent. But eight out of ten of your applications, you should be uh, just as long as you have porosity on the substrate. And when I talk about porosity, that is very important. Uh, what we're looking for, and this is another pro tip, so these are just the things I give you to write in. You might not have time on a data page. These would only be things that would be in a conversation with someone uh, that was handling decorative uh, concrete expertise. But, but it's called the dime rule, and this is good for any type of concrete application. A dime-sized bead of water should penetrate any type of cementitious substrate in roughly 10 to 15 seconds. There should be very little difference between a regular seafoam sponge that you might would buy at a store for washing your car and really a concrete block. They should really readily absorb water at almost the same rate. And most people say, well, how can that be the case? Obviously, you've got one's concrete and one's kind of foam. Well, while they have a different density structure, the absorbency structure is almost the same. The pores inside the concrete should not be uh, covered with curing seal. They should not be filled in with some type of uh, concrete admixture that repels water. We, we actually make some of those that we'll see here in just a little bit. We make products called siloxanes and silanes, and these products actually are repellents. So any type of repellent that is inherent in the concrete Obviously, a semi-transparent decorative water-based stain is also going to be rejected as well. So just make sure that, uh, once again, you know you, you probably want to have your maximum peroxy absorption rate is 30 minutes. Uh, if you if you if it did absorb in 30 minutes, you might need to use some etching solution, some phosphoric acid to open up those pores to get just a little bit more bite. And I always say this. So if it takes water longer than one minute to penetrate any substrate, then that is more than likely a substrate that needs to be mechanically uh, prepped and addressed. So but just for your basic applications that uh, I'm familiar with what uh, uh, your organization may be applying, this is a true income stream revenue type of driving type of application. And the, the really easy thing to get with your sure and Williams representative to do is to get a couple of sample kits, uh, inquire about those, get you some samples made. And while you're doing any other type of home improvement, lay a few of those samples out and see if a few people ask you, you know, uh, what is that or, or, or you know, where, where is that going? You'll get a lot of response for this particular product. Our high-performance industrial clear coat, uh, another very popular clear for interior. If you're needing a very heavy-duty system and you're using something like what we showed on the previous uh, slide, which was the water-based semi-transparent stain, this interior product would be your go-to. This would be your bullet. It's a single-component uh, urethane that is designed to work as hard as its two component competitive applications. They work very well under, as you see here in the picture, that's an infusion acid stain system. They also work very well with acetone dye systems. I know some of you may have an interest, and this is something we can certainly get with your leadership team and your and, and, and Sherwin Williams there. A lot of people are chasing the uh, what they call the concrete polish look. And these products, while they are not polished concrete to make that differentiation, but they can give you that look and feel of that particular very, very popular and trend-growing application. Uh, these are very uh, high-impact resistant products. Uh, they resist yellowing. 
Now, the one thing I will say as a pro tip I always tell people is that whenever you're dealing with urethane, they genuinely, or they, they just kind of have a, a not so great relationship with rubber. And if rubber or something is parked over for a long time, you might see some rubber marking that occurs. But this is generally the case with urethanes and plasticizers. And those are things that just make a little bit of that rubber come off into the surface. In most cases, easily got up with just a simple rag or even a simple rag in water. But we do always want you to be aware that if you're going to be parking on this particular system, have an individual obtain them some mats or any type of rubber to contact the floor that they have some type of matting uh, involved there. But if you can see as if it's good enough for uh, an air sports hanger, which you would put the weight and, 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 and that type of resistance for a plane, then most of our commercial applications, then this certainly would be a great clear coat system to utilize. This particular product uh, continues to be perhaps the number one go-to when it comes to clear coating uh, semi-transparent systems. Uh, this here is concrete seal or clear gloss oil base. I, I know that this group and organization has been around a while. If you notice in that little black band, I know it may be kind of small to read, but it says Clear 23. And this product has been a staple in the executive concrete community and market. Um, one of the things I do, you know, want to make sure that you know is that while we do call it a gloss, it's generally only a gloss if it is applied to some other application. And what I mean by that, this would be a clear coat that you could use for the uh, product that was earlier, that was the red label solvent base. Remember we talked about how those products come in satin. Well, if you wanted to move that satin to a gloss, this would be the product that you would use. It was specifically designed to, to, uh, to do that. If you were to put this particular product on bare concrete, it would probably take four to five coats to get you where you need it to be. So we really like this one. One of the uh, factors in it is this is not 100% xylene based like some of our other solvents. This is actually a xylol mineral spirits base. And why that's even important to you is that if you're doing some type of color change, this would be an intermediate coat you'd have to use. Or if you're making a xylene based solvent color product gloss, well, to keep the two from intermixing so that way you wouldn't be re-wetting the xylene-based solid, uh, solid color, then this would be a product that have a much lower flash time and flash rate and allow you to get the product on there without intermingling your already colored, uh, solid colored substrate. Now, once again, because of its lower solids, even though it is solvent, it definitely resists water and cool chemicals. This is also ideal for individuals who have salt water pools. Uh, that mineral spirits formulation is really good. We're starting to see an increase in the industry of um, individuals as well as commercial and residential that are starting to uh, baseline now uh, salt water pools. But we just want to make sure, though, that you know the gloss factor and where that comes in at. If you put this on bare concrete, you might be a little bit disappointed. But if you do want a satin on bare concrete or you want something that has a lower sheen, this would be ideal. And then again, with any clear coats, we always recommend that you add some type of a slip resistant additive. Our low uh, VOC, once again, we kind of changed this. This is also called Concrete Seal or Clear Gloss. Um, I do want to kind of brag on this particular product a little bit. Even though we utilize it a lot more in the north, this has become a great go-to product for individuals who have had previously stamped concrete. And you may be looking for a sealer, especially after their stamped concrete project is somewhat kind of faded or has gone to look dull. The, uh, the solvent uh, package in this one works very, very well in refreshing uh, previously applied applications. So it's always good to always you know, to know if it's been previously sealed or not. But if you're in doubt, this is a better product to use if you really do need to use a solvent. Uh, people ask all the time, well, why solvent, why water-based? When it comes to clear coats, another pro tip here is that solvent-based clear coats tend to make the application richer. It makes it live. It, it brings out the color. It really enhances 
the application and produces that deep modeling and air decimation that's associated with semi-transparent applications. Now, to the other hand, water-based clears, they tend to hold the color to the time it was an application. So you don't really get a lot of rich, deep, uh, that uh, you know, kind of a really textured look outside of what techniques you might have produced during the application, but a clear coat that is a water base will not turn nearly as dark. So that can help you. Uh, just want to make sure that that distinction is made. Most of the time, water base clears are used because people need something that is going to be very, very low odor. But if you do have the time, you have the proper ventilation, and it is the proper system for the right project, then this particular product, I just don't want you to be uh, as they say, thrown off by the fact that it's low VOC and we kind of put this in uh, compliant areas, those of us that are in the south or even in the southeast and the southwest, this is a great product to use uh, for those purposes you indicated on the slide. Now, this is our optimum water-based product. That we were talking about that differentiation earlier. This is a high solids. We call these emulsion-type products. The reason why that's important for you to know is because these products in the can, uh, they are not crystal clear, they're actually white. And when you put them on, they're actually slightly white or light blue, and they turn clear. Now, another reason why that's important to you is because a lot of times, whoever you do work for, they want you to somehow own their substrate or own their canvas. We sometimes in decorative refer to it as a decorative canvas. And how that could uh, begin to become a rock is that if there's inherent moisture in the substrate, then in most cases, uh, a water-based product is going to be your best option because it is still breathable versus a solvent. Once it dries in that first hour, if there's any moisture in there, it's generally trapped. And the results of trapped moisture, whether you use a solvent or water-based, is that you'll see a cloudy or a hazy effect. Now, one of the things that you know I always like to share with individuals, and the reason why we, we talk about the the emulsion thing, is that we at uh, HSC is that division of Sherwin Williams that makes these architectural products. We definitely make products that uh, go on white and turn clear, but we don't make products that are clear and turn white. And that's truly important to note in case somebody is endeavoring to put you in a position where they're challenging your application, where they're challenging the product, that if they turn on their sprinkler systems too soon, or they, uh, if, if it does rain, which you can't control, or poor construction methodology where they maybe did not have constructed a moisture vapor barrier, all those things can contribute to the hazing or cloudiness of applications that are done by either water-based or solvent-based products. But our concrete sealer wet look is certainly our optimum product. Now, I'm not going to go back through the uh, slides for uh, time's sake, but I just want to give you another, uh, what I call it, another pro note. Uh, earlier in the water-based solid color product, there is a blue, if that's the one that had the blue label, there is a product uh, that is called clear, just like what you see at the bottom of this one where it says clear. The blue label clear is satin. So if somebody doesn't really want that really rich wet look or that high film build look, you do have a satin clear coat option. And remember, that's what's nice about the water-based products. As long as the surface is dry, as long as the surface is adequately profiled to 120 grit, and as long as what is already come up is already, as they say, is already done, then you can scratch the surface, put these products on, and revitalize that particular substrate. Now, these are the uh, paver sealers that are really growing in popularity. People are getting uh, dry, dusty pavers as an alternate flooring option for exterior and even some interior substrates we've seen to notice of late. Uh, these are some fantastic products to feature just as a way to get an insight to a, creating additional revenue stream and income for your projects. 
uh, you know, by just being observant, you may notice that someone may have some paler pavers. And if you do notice that there are some grass growing perhaps between them, uh, the product there that has the purple label, the paver sealer natural, this is another pro note. Uh, all the paver sealers lock into joint sand, but this particular one, the paver sealer natural, has an additional uh, feature to it is that it uh, has a grass inhibitive agent in it. So it uh, locks down the pavers, stabilizes the joint sand, but also keeps grass from growing in between uh, the pavers. So you might want to take a note of that. It is the only one of the sheens, anything that has any type of gloss when it comes to paver sealers, uh, do not do that. But we also are noticing from the industry that there are more pavers going into vehicular driving uh, scenarios and these products can certainly uh, uh, be utilized for that particular application. Now another uh, pro note we mentioned earlier and I said I would circle back to it, when it comes to the semi-transparent water-based stain, we talked about when perhaps a substrate may be over porous, which would mean that all the color is just sinking down into the substrate and you get very little to very, very light coloring on that substrate. Well, as a result of that, what you want to do is you want to take that particular product, the paver suit of natural, and you would apply one coat of that. By applying one coat of paver sealer natural, then what you end up doing is you're able to create a barrier, kind of like a bonding type of primer that would keep the stain on top of the surface. And as it stays on top of the surface, what generally happens at that point is that it keeps the colorant stabilized on the surface as well. And then once you can come back with it, you can come back with either a water-based sealer or a solvent-based sealer. And as a result of being able to do that, now you have your color lock in between the paper sealer, which is going to be kind of like your bonding primer, and then your clear coat. Now this is the one we really wanted to do, it was the Shield Creek Garage Floor Epoxy System. It is perhaps the number one product that you could really utilize to grow your revenue stream. Shield Creek is perhaps becoming the fastest growing product in all of Sherwin Williams for decorative applications, especially in the residential market. Um, we, we thought that for a while there would be a tapering off of any people that wanted their actual garage floors done with uh, decorative concrete flakes, but uh, actually that particular market segment is a double-digit increased growth opportunity there. Shield Creek comes in eight uh, package colors. The two primary colors you might imagine are the gray and the beige, which is the gray we refer to as pewter. Um, many, th this is probably the biggest question about the product is that I know that in reading some of the language in our, uh, perhaps our data pages as well as the instructions, the question comes up, does it really truly require uh, some type of acid etching or some type of uh, etching prep preparation? Uh, my recommendation is I don't really trust any concrete floor especially if I didn't build it or I didn't install it or I wasn't the first one there to utilize it, which means that it could be contaminated with all sorts of types of things. And even though someone uh, might tell you that, hey, no one's ever parked in here, this is new construction, even during new construction, every time I've gone on a job site, uh, there's always been someone that had a van or a truck or some type of vehicle inside uh, that garage. So with that being the case, you know, we're, you know, word to the wise, I always recommend using some type of phosphoric acid application. And we're going to see what those uh, products look like. But the cleaner does come in the kit, as well as the uh, sand-resistant additive comes in the kit. And it is a very, very user-friendly epoxy. Even though it's a two-component, very user-friendly. We actually kind of model it after. If anyone uh, is used to painting, and I know this group, that's your specialty, then certainly this product is, is a very easy product to pass along to your crews and uh, the individuals who will be doing your applications. Now, one of the features that we like to highlight uh, for individuals 
is people that may have very oily, stained garage floors. I imagine you've probably seen a few um, of these, and, and they are more culprits because a lot of times if it's been an existing uh, location that oil has penetrated very deeply into the cementitious substrate, we also recommend that those areas be well pre-treated a day or two before prior to full-scale shieldcrete application. And you want to use a, a non-residue uh, cleaner degreaser for those types of applications. And you know, one of the things I always like to, to, to make sure that when it comes to garage floors, always over-prep the drive lanes. And what we mean by the drive lanes is where the cars come in and they park. Because what generally happens, and I get this that many times, especially for existing, is that paraffin leaching, if you look at the tire that's in the picture, you see the tread right here. When that tire comes in, it sets. Sometimes those tires are 240, 250 degrees. And if you've never tried this before, in most of the classes where I teach face-to-face, -face, I always tell someone the last time that they parked their car, they generally rock before the car actually stopped. During that rocking motion, that's when the majority of the paraffin is released into the concrete. Now, paraffin is a component of rubber, uh, and generally chlorinated rubber with that. So most of the time, um, any type of cleaning degreasing action, any type of liquid etching action is not going to touch paraffin-laden concrete pores. They do require, and it is in the instructions, some type of mechanical abrasion. Now, for most uh, the time using 80 grit sandpaper, that'd be your pro note on that, just ran in the tire lanes, not over the whole garage floor, but just in the tire lanes will often take off that very fine layer of paraffin and then allow your application to get the bonding necessary so that you don't have to get a call back for hot tire pickup. But whenever I've seen this happen, if someone says, hey, it came up, and you'll go there, and you'll see just where the tire tread marks are, and if you take a little bit of water and put in those tread marks, you'll see it stay there forever. That's because the surface has been contaminated with paraffin. So in order to do that, note to self, just make sure and mechanically remove that, at least in the drive lanes. Waterproof bottles, we'll just kind of go through this somewhat briefly because I know that there may be some questions, so I'll definitely leave time for that. Um, this is a popular application too in places especially where there's a lot of grease thaw cycles and, and even the south, we don't think about that uh, very often, but there is a lot of freeze thaw that occurs and as a result of this freeze thaw and the icing salt, they do a lot of damage, a lot of pitting to concrete. And the best protection against that is actually to whenever it's done is to have it treated. Now, one of the things about water repellents, I do always have this as a cautionary tale. This is where we kind of leave the decorative arena. If you do decide to use some type of waterproof or a repelling agent, then that substrate is likely not going to be the best candidate in the future for some type of decorative application because you're going to have to remove it. And since they are true penetrators, one likely going to have to remove just a thin layer of film mechanically in order to do something decorative uh, with those products um, in the future. So this is a good one. Another one that is not featured in here, and I definitely want to give you uh, a note to reach out to your local uh, Sherwin Williams representative is uh, a product called Driveway and Concrete Protector. That is the heavy duty version of this particular product. As you'll notice here, this is more for your light walk areas, your foot traffic use, but that particular product called HNC Driveway and Concrete Protector is really designed for your vehicular traffic. And one of the things that when you put it on there, a lot of people don't even can't even tell it's there. It doesn't build a film. It is a siloxane type of product. And as a result, what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, where's the product at? And if you go and get their Starbucks coffee or some soda or whatever, when they put that around there, they'll see that it will beat up just like mercury. So that's the type of protection that you're getting. And also, too, if you need a product that you want to put over some type of stone, uh, such as flagstone, as you see mentioned right here, they do not, they do the very little 
least amount of change to color. And that's very important if you're working with customers who may want you to seal their natural stone. Then we have our commercial grade uh, water repellents. These would probably be, if you're ever going to use them, something you would contact H&C or your local Sheridan Williams uh, sales representative about. But we'd like for you to know these. There is one as a pro tip that I would like for you to, to, to tie, uh, endeavor to take a note of. If you are going into a driveway or, or walkway situation where there has been inherent moisture issues, if you really want to create a true waterproofing system with some of our products, then take note of the HB100 and HB150 that is right up above the picture to your right. Um, if you apply a flood coat of these products uh, onto a driveway or a back patio or a walkway, whatever the concrete substrate condition may be, these can go into there. They put pretty much a, an invisible film over the uh, concrete, suppressing uh, the hydrostatic movement of water. Now, with this HB100, HB150, as long as you work inside the recoat window, you can come back and apply our solvent-based solid color sealer. That's not the same, not the water-based one, but that is the red label solvent uh, solid color sealer and create a true optimum waterproofing system. So that's an additional pro tip. It does say it on the data pages, but I always like to, 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 to let you know that because you may be dealing with some situations where there is inherent moisture issues. Restoration products, well, obviously, first, any good job is going to begin with the prep. Uh, I certainly would recommend agency clean and degreaser, but I'm more concerned with you finding a clean and degreaser that does not leave a soapy residue. One of the things that, you know, we get back samples from people who have had issues with their floors, and 20% of the time on the back of that, instead of dirt or another coating, it sometimes is what's called the surfactant or soap that comes out of where an individual didn't remove uh, their their cleaner degreaser. And I love the people that come back with 3,000, 5,000 PSI power washers that blasted everything off, supposedly, which really meant that they only created more suds. And as a result, that when those suds dry, they actually become very, very hardened very, very slick pieces of film that create a barrier for most coatings to either penetrate and or bond to. Etching solution. The quick story here with etching solution, phosphoric acid. I know some of you probably sitting out there on some hydrochloric acid. And if you are going to use hydrochloric acid, at least make sure that you are properly neutralizing it. Water does not neutralize hydrochloric or muriatic acid you need to make sure to use some type of base, such as ammonia, and a pro note, uh, you would need at least one part ammonia to two parts water to effectively neutralize muriatic acid, or you need to use baking soda. Uh, one pound of one uh, box of baking soda to 2.5 gallons of water, keeping it stirred so that it doesn't separate, will neutralize muriatic acid. Or you can just make life easier and know that you've got a really good acid application performed by using HNC etching solution, which is a phosphoric-based, uh, very environmentally friendly type of product. The unique thing about phosphoric acid is that it is neutralized by water when you get ready to do your rinse. It also continues to etch no matter where you put it, unlike muriatic acid. Once muriatic acid hits, any type of cementitious substrate, it automatically reacts right then and right there. So as you move the reaction around, you could actually be moving reactive muriatic acid around that is doing nothing to other parts of your substrate, which could cause you a flooring failure. So that is the reason why we strongly recommend phosphoric acid type. Also, when you do clean off your substrate, as you'll notice in the picture, that nice green graph, well, the next time it rains and it thunders and lightning, well, you have phosphorus that's left over from your etching solution mixing with the nitrate that's in the air from thunder. 
and the lightning, and then you have red iron oxide that's in the ground, you basically created, yes, you guessed it, fertilizer. And that actually will make the grass green and will actually make it grow versus, generally speaking, most people who prep, especially outside with muriatic acid, the grass genuinely turns brown if there's any grass the next season at all. So those are the reasons why using a phosphoric acid solution is much better than muriatic acid. Grill finish repair is for those individuals who have really bad concrete. And this is the warning uh, to this one. There are times when the concrete just needs to be replaced. Do not take it upon yourself to own shifting concrete or earthquake-driven concrete. There are times when individuals need to consider and bring in someone to evaluate whether a substrate needs to be replaced. But for all other, groom finish repair is a great topical application. It's applied basically, it's in a bag now, so just to let you know that we no longer make it in the bucket. Uh, we're able to save you, have some incredible cost savings for you because we put it in the bag. However, uh, it is the product if you want freshly poured concrete look. It's a great product to do a skim coat as well if you want to do an acid stain, but it's able to be sloped. It fills the spas. It's the low, it hits the low area, and at about uh, 6,800 PSI, which is twice what normal cast in place concrete is actually poured in at, which is usually about 3,500, it is highly impact and abrasion resistant. So we recommend two coats. Brooming is optional. We like to do the brooming because a lot of times people use that for slip resistance as well as uh, organic profiling so that it looks a little bit different uh, for whatever the purpose may be. But you could use a color pack to gain some additional color if you just don't like where your consumer does it. And then you would be able to seal it with a, a sealer or if you just uh, wanted to use gray, you could seal it with a solid color stain and or sealer. Quick patch of repair. It is designed for when the concrete's actually gone. And what we mean by when the concrete's gone is it's at the corner of a step when it's gone, when uh, a piece of the sidewalk is gone. These are opportunities for you to be able to do something right then on the job so you don't have to come back the next day but to be able to have something that returns you to service in about 15 to 30 minutes. This is not a crack filling product and you always want to respect your saw cuts and your expansion joints and things like that, but at the end of the day, when you do need to fill in a very, very low area, generally, you know, no more than an inch and it can be done an inch at a time in lifts, you can use quick patch and repair to take care of those areas where there is concrete loss. Sharp grip, I think that's probably the most familiar product that's in the room. We all know this to be our slit resistant surface additive. Uh, it is great in clear colors. It's also great in solid color stains and sealers. And uh, if anybody's ever experienced it, you do know that it is easier on your feet than actual ground and place sand. So all these products and more are available on www.hcconcrete.com. And I would certainly like to uh, thank you for being a part of our uh, training today. And I hope that we created some interest as well as some avenues for you to grow some income. I know that we, we took a really, really high dive at a lot of the products and really need to understand systems or look for training opportunities. A lot of the uh, districts will be doing their fall training for Deputy Concrete uh, this fall. So make sure to talk to your uh, contact assured way and to find out where you can be a part of that hands-on project or event and uh, be able to participate and learn how to do a few more of these more intricate application appli uh, uh, opportunities. So with that, I'll turn it back over to our administrator, and I'm still going to be available for questions uh, if anyone has any. Hey, Jeff, Steve has a quick question. Sure. Um, is there an HNC product that will remove rust stains on concrete, yet state for surrounding vegetation? Absolutely. That's a great question. And I, I'm going to say no. HSC for sure does not. And the reason why I say that for sure does not, if, if, if some of our, our is pretty strong, um, and it has been known to be able to fade rust. When you say truly remove it, 
Um, I would recommend a product that could be sourced or housed through Sherwin Williams is a product called Ospo, or you could definitely talk to your Sherwin Williams representative to get you a rust concrete removing product that's also safe for the environment. Any anyone else have a question? Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Yes. Steve, Steve has a question? Steve, you may be on mute if you're uh, talking to us. Steve Hopkins. I'm Steve that you're uh, talking to. Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, I posted, uh, I, I typed something in there. I just wonder, because i got a couple different things that I'm wondering about. Uh, is, uh, is the... Uh, is that good for industrial applications too, where there was, uh, say, tow motors and whatnot? Yes, we, we actually we actually have in some some big industrial environments. We uh, we've had a lot um, in Cummins Diesel. Of a number of projects done with them, they really love our safety yellow project uh, product too for their traffic lines. In most cases. Uh, one reason why people really like shield creating in an industrial environment is why you may have to shut the space down. You don't generally have to shut the building down because of its very, very low odor. They generally don't do the flakes in that particular type of system, but they definitely do the uh, shield creep uh, just solid, and they and it does it is abrasive resistant even in your harsh or more commercialized environments. Yes, I was looking at. I was. Uh, I'm looking at a uh, an industrial position where they uh, they want part of the floor done for now and maybe more later. And they actually have an area that has like a two part epoxy that has the flakes in it that somebody else had done at one time or another. Okay. So, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they looking to uh, Steve remove the previous coating, or they're looking for something to go over it? What, what is, just just, just a second. Say that again. I said, are they looking for? To, are they looking to for their prep to remove the original coating, or are they trying to find well, this, something that's no, this, is go another, this, is, this is another area, and there's going okay. to be, there's, a lot, there's a lot of grease down and oils and uh, some uh, oh uh, tape from uh, you know for for the uh, previous the, year. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think you'll be just fine. I always tell people this though, and remember. When working with water-based epoxies, while you do have the user-friendly environment, uh, you do have the, the low odor uh, environment, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're working corner to corner to finish out an entire area because they are somewhat temperamental to temperature exchange. And what we mean by that is that pewter is only one color. It is the color of gray in which you put it on. If you come back and change the mm -hmm. environment, then it, it will actually might be slightly a little bit different grade based on the application. But since the product is a water-based epoxy, it does slightly rewet itself during the application. So that way you have a consistent coat that's all one color when you do the application. Also, too, I always recommend ever you do an application, make sure you try to have enough product of the same batch to ensure then that you're boxing the material as well to ensure that you get consistency. Yeah, in this particular application, it's not going to be wall to wall. They want it from like one yellow uh, OSHA line to uh, over to uh, this one machine and then over to the wall. Uh, yeah. So that it's not. It's technically it's not going to be a, a wall to wall application. Wall to wall. I strongly recommend, Steve, that you talk to our Sherman Williams team and possibly look at. Uh, uh, there, there, there's probably some other water-based technologies we have in our armor cell line. Um, I mean, solvent, obviously, no matter whose product or which, you know, which for Sherwin-Williams products you were actually able to use, 
a solvent epoxy is the best for color consistency just because the products are somewhat what they call you know kind of stabilized inside the can you know a solvents and if so they don't necessarily re-wet but they're just a lot more composite whereas yeah. water bases tend and that's just the phenomenon of water bases just because of the resin packages that are generally in them so so my first recommendation would be to check and see what else we got in the uh, Sherwin Williams wheelhouse for solvent epoxy and if solvent epoxy is not an option which in an occupied setting like that it may not be then you might look at some water based you know technology that we have in our armor seal group but if you do have a wall-to-wall -wall application uh, the contractor kits are utilized for those applications all the time and, and I'll tell you this I have gone in where there, there really wasn't a noticeable color difference outside of one being fresh because they actually went back and the other one had traffic and we're on it if it's an industrial environment like that Steve then it may not even really particularly matter but if you if you just like that, I just want to give you the best practices of what you're working with while you work with agency. And uh, I see that it has these kits and everything. It talks about the flakes, but I've been I was been looking around trying to uh, find some kind of video or something that shows how this is, uh, is applied. Because I figure you've got a time limit, so it's going to have to be done fast and efficiently. And uh, so I was thinking, well, how do they do this? Is, yeah, is you know. Uh, well, I, you know, I, 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 I'm just uh, unfortunate I don't have access to the website at the second, but I, I want to say that we just recently added a Shield Creed video on there as well. Uh, you know, one of the things, too, that might be uh, beneficial, you know, is to reach out to your Sherman Williams representative and see if they can get with, you know, and you, we have a lot, just depends on your market, we have a, a lot of very, very efficient uh, H&C Sherman Williams uh, individuals out there that have learned from us at H and C, and we kind of come on a on a on a semi regular basis, I could say. But you might be if you there's one special like what you got, a, a good actual live product demo could probably do your world of good and just be able to kind of show you the tricks and trade that you won't be able to read off instructions or video or a label, you know, or adapt. So definitely check with your Sherwin Williams rep and see if they could get something like that scheduled for you. Yeah, we def definitely a, a video would be uh, beneficial either way. Uh, we're kind of a sm smaller market right here, and we, like we, uh, the uh, field rep is only here one day a week in this area. So, uh, and, and uh, they're tied up at the store. Sometimes it's hard to get all the, the questions you have answered. <laughs> I understand. Steve, what market, if you don't mind me asking, if you don't mind sharing? I'm in they, no they, North Central Ohio, uh, Richland County. North Central well, I, I tell you what, though, I know the guy uh, who works for H and C. I, I will definitely, uh, I, I think uh, your leadership team would be able to provide me some contact information for you post this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, however, Jeff Eisworth is our H and C representative in that area, and Jeff is by far perhaps the most technical, uh, the, the highest expertise of anybody on our team. So I would definitely like to, uh, you know, reach out to him, you know, like I said, post this call, let him know that uh, you have a particular project like this at this level of, of interest. And maybe that SW representative that you have could maybe reach out to uh, Jeff Eisworth and maybe get something set up because Jeff is actually in uh, Ohio himself. Okay. If you could forward me the link to the video, I'll make sure everyone um, receives it. Certainly, I will. I will try to endeavor to do that post this call. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, this is Barbara Rosita yep. with uh, Fresh Co. in Connecticut. If somebody yes. has a, it's a garage and um, there seems to be some water seepage coming into the garage mm -hmm. um, yes. because um, there is, you know, the stucco is coming away from the wall and there's that effort right. that it's like yep. about a foot and a half up. So um, what is the best way to deal with that to kind of, seal it and then make it look presentable again. 
Sure. One of the uh, the things that you obviously you you got to address the water suppression first, and and the transmigration you have, and and if it's coming off the end of the location, it could be also. I mean, obviously, it could be moving hydrostatically vertically, and it could be moving horizontally. So, I always recommend that they endeavor to treat the exposed area of the concrete, the concrete's above grade with a siloxane. That would be like HB100 or HB150. Take care of that on the outside first. And then when they come into the inside, I would also treat uh, the inside concrete uh, vertically, not horizontally, because you're going you're gonna to do your garage application with that. Uh, but I would go ahead and treat it because a lot of times the, the I mean, obviously moisture doesn't care if the concrete land, you know, vertically or horizontally, it just wants to pass the least resistance. So if you go ahead and treat the horizontal areas that will, will keep that moisture kind of at bay, then when you get ready to put your garage floor application on, the what's nice, another attribute of the shieldcrete among epoxies, it is still breathable. So basically, if you create a hydrostatic barrier by putting on an epoxy, which is going to draw the moisture up, for five days, it's still going to let the moisture escape through it and not cause any type of separation between it and the substrate. After five days, though, uh, the epoxy will harden and will harden enough in the pores that we've not seen any type of release come up when there's been prior known. Uh, moisture issues just due to the fact that most of the early moisture that occurs occurs in the first 72 hours of escape and shieldcrete's open for five so by the time it goes into its cure cycle you're pretty well you know you're pretty well now on the shieldcrete bonding to the concrete but you still need to treat your your vertical with some siloxane HB 150 even even seven uh, percent such as uh, uh, concrete and driveway protector, uh, that that would be a good one to do. You just got to make sure that you're treating both exposed areas of your concrete horizontal, uh, horizontally as well as vertically. Okay, so when you're saying horizontal and vertical, I mean, are we talking like the whole floor? Or are we talking, you know, six yeah. inches from the wall or? No, no, I, I, I would, I would strongly recommend a minimum, minimum of 24 inches from the floor. 24 inches from the floor. A lot of people think that water can only go 68, six to eight inches up a wall, but no one ever seen the total water that. Um, I've taken core samples and seen water go as high as 30 inches. That's pretty rare. That's a, that's generally where you're almost sitting on an underground spring when that happens, or. You're sitting in a very, very, you know, high water table type of area, which I've experienced that kind of in Louisiana and some of the real, real southern and coastal states. But in most cases, you'll be fine 24 inches and, and uh, lower. Okay. So treat the whole floor and then treat 20, like 24 inches up the wall. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, now, I don't, I don't want you to apply the siloxane so to the concrete floor if you're going to be doing a garage floor epoxy application, you will you you won't have to worry about that because the epoxy is breathable. Okay, so don't, got, if I'm going to do the epoxy, don't do the last on, just do it on the walls, and then that's right. Only do your only do your siloxane on the walls if you're doing a garage floor application. So the epoxy will be able to stand alone. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, great question. Anybody else? Last call for a question. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time for hosting our webinar. We appreciate it. We are a we are agency on behalf of us. We're very grateful for the opportunity to be in front of your group, and we certainly look forward to any other opportunities for training or even maybe an advanced class at some point in the future if you all would like to consider it. And I will uh, get on try to look for any additional information and or uh, links that can uh, post what we discussed that could be helpful for this uh, team. That would be great. And I'll, I'll make sure to forward it to everyone. 
I have that would be fantastic. We sure appreciate you. Thank you so much, and everyone, thank you for taking the time and joining and listening to Jeff. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great day at it, and make a lot of money.